You're listening to Bro Down Podcast all fucking day. Oh, yeah. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Bro Down Podcast. I'm Tim Fulton. I'm Andy Smith. And today we're going to be doing a fight recap for UFC Fight Night, Maya vs. Askren. Oh, shit. It was a good one. I'm not going to lie. This was. I know we've been saying that a lot lately, but this was a good card. All right. It's crazy. Let's start it off. It's what we got crazy. first? Crazy. First off, we have Cyril Gain versus Dante Mays. Scroll down on the uh, the fight card there. Ooh, actually, no, just yeah. kidding. The first up, we have Muslim Salikov versus Loriano Staropoli. Yeah, this one was uh, this was a good fight. Um, they were both of those guys were throwing some wicked shit. Yeah, they were throwing some creative, super creative stuff. Yeah, the, high energy kind of strikes. Um, it was a little one sided. Salikov. Uh, hurt Staropoli real bad. Yeah, but he he made it through. He did stuck make, it out. He did make it through. Um, not much else to say about this besides both guys were pretty tough. It was an entertaining fight, but I I agree. There's not a lot to digest from this. Yeah, one. Salikov was... Salikov definitely definitely got the decision. Uh, oh yeah, 100%. yeah. He 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 earned it. So next I'm sh- <laughs> next, I'm shocked he didn't earn the uh, he didn't get a knockout. Or, yeah, I don't know. I don't know either of those guys too well, so I don't. I don't know uh, how what what their records are as far as knockouts and, and stuff like that. But uh, Staropoli has a chin. Yeah, because he got yeah. hurt bad and he he was a gamer. He he at didn't the, at he the didn't very back last. Off. He kept trucking. Nope. All right, now we have Cyril Gain versus Dante Dante Mays, which I have to say, That's a good one. This is the reason. And I know not everyone agrees with me, but this is the reason why I love watching heavyweight fights. Good, good heavyweight fights. Yeah, I was impressed. I was impressed with Gain. Oh, 100%. I am excited to see where he goes in the future. I was impressed with his his cardio. Yeah. Not just his his striking ability, but especially because they're heavyweights. Yeah. he didn't really gas. And he was fast. Yeah, very fast. And he was very fast, very methodical, very all over the place. Yeah, he, Mays know, tough, though. He hurt Mays. That one body shot that he landed was he got brutal. He ridiculous amount of body brutal. shots. Yeah, brutal. Um, but, yeah, that that, that guy, Gain, uh, is going to definitely give a lot of guys some problems, especially oh. if he continues on that track and keeps his cardio up like that. I mean, granted, it was a three-round fight. Yeah, but, but still. You know. In the heavyweight division, if you can have cardio over your opponent, it's a huge, huge deal. And you got to give props to him. He was easily winning all three rounds, but he did not settle for that. He went for, I think there was like 30 seconds left, and he got the tap out. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah, he uh, he went, he went wanted to make a statement. He, uh, that was he, a good fight. A thousand percent. Very entertaining, too. Oh, yeah. It, I think he got, uh, not fight of the night, but he got one of those bonuses. Performance of the night? Yeah, he got a yeah. performance bonus. Yeah, that was a good fight. One of the best ones on the card. I'm being attacked by a ladybug. It, it like, dive-bombed me over here. You're, you're going to be okay? I think I'm going to survive. All right, next. <laughs> Talking about fighters, like, bashing each other's heads, and I'm like, oh, my God, a ladybug. Yeah. All right, up next, we have Frank Camacho versus Benil Der- Dariush. Dariush, very good. Thanks. This was uh, very impressive on Benil Dariush's part. Yeah, it was. He fought the perfect fight. It, it was... You couldn't have planned it better. No, he he's uh been around for a, a while, and um, he did exactly what it looked like he had planned to do, and he made it look easy. Yeah, like super super easy. Yeah, once he once he he was doing good with the strikes too. Yeah, he got yeah. him down and just grabbed his neck. It was very impressive. It was didn't take a lot of damage. Is can't doesn't get much better than that. You can't no. ask for a better fight. For the they, most part. They were interviewing him afterwards, and he he just, like, he, he didn't look like he had a fight at all. Like, no. Like, there was just so much left in him. He was just ready to fucking rock it. Yeah, no, he, he fought a perfect fight. It was it was kind of a beautiful thing to watch. Yeah, it was it was cool. All right, and this one is a little bit of a difficult one. We have yeah. Michael Johnson versus Stevie Ray, mm-hmm. which, start off with what you think. Um, I thought it would... Decisions like this, it's hard to complain because it's not, it's not an egregious whatever. I thought that Michael Johnson won the first round, edged him, uh, but again, you can't, you can't really rely on the judges to get it right because they suck. Because they suck. A lot of the times they suck. Um, but Stevie Ray pulled it off at the very end. He got that uh, that takedown and then he got into full mount and Johnson couldn't do anything. 
No, he, he was, almost he was stuck. Yeah, there's a couple times where if he started to unload, they might have stopped it, and they almost stopped it. I think once or twice kind of came close to it with the with the strikes on the ground. Yeah. But uh, Johnson's just one of those dudes. He has these really good performances, and he he ends up it just slips away from him. Yeah, yeah. and it sucks because he's very talented. Um, I don't know what. I don't know. It's just some guys just have a bad run. I, I don't think it's anything to do with his skills. I don't think it's his. No, because he clearly proved. Him, he clearly proved himself. He yeah. He was dominating most of the match. Yeah. Well, the first match, first round was pretty even. Second round, Johnson definitely won. Yeah. And yeah. then, um, you know, third round, he was winning the first half of it, and yeah. then the second yeah. half, you know, it was all Stevie Ray. This, so this is one of the ones that I wouldn't have been shocked if it went to a tie. Yeah, draw draw would have been a possi- possibility, but I think with the the ground control and the damage that he that he they probably gonna I knew they were gonna give him the third round. Yeah, the first yeah. round was the only one that was in question. One of them did give it to Johnson, I believe. There wasn't a split majority decision. No, one guy. Uh, it was twenty eight twenty eight. Uh one guy had it a draw. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So it was so he did score the probably the third round a, a draw. If I had to, if I had to guess which round he scored. Really, a draw. I would have I would have guessed the first round a draw. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I'd have to. I'd be interested to see which one they they score a draw. Yeah, that's because Johnson was was tuning him up. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe the first round was Cause, a draw because the third round I would give the first half to Johnson, but the second round easily to Ray, and I think in more of a substantial. Capacity. The second half of the round, right? Second half. Yeah, second yeah. half of the round. Yeah, tough tough loss for for Michael Johnson with, with something like that. You do pretty much everything right, and then you have a bad two minutes, and it it slips away from you. It sucks, but you know, congrats yeah. to Stevie Ray. Yeah, I feel bad for him too because they said that his last fight was something similar. Where it yeah, was... last couple of fights he's had some some runs, but he's beaten some of like really high level guys. So he's got the he has the ability to do it. It's just something ain't clicking, something ain't going together right there. But well, hopefully he comes back. Me. He hasn't trained with me yet, so oh Jesus Christ, <laughs> <laughs> that's his problem. You don't know. That's a, you don't know. <laughs> You know about my skills. One hundred percent of the guys who lose have not trained with me. I'm just throwing that stat out there. That's true. It is. That's true. It is. One hundred percent of the guys that win also haven't trained with you. <laughs> Listen here. Potato, I, potato. <laughs> potato, potato. Tomato, uh, tomato. Uh, last up, we have Damian Maya versus Ben Askren, yeah. the main event of the night. Which <sighs> this one, um, I, I love the fight because oh, the it's two was, two yeah. high level grapplers. You got to see. Both of them not the best stand up. Ben has such a weird style. It, it, it's, it's very quirky and awkward, and looks like he's doesn't know what he's doing sometimes out there compared to the other guys. Yeah, you don't want to talk down about these guys because like each one of them can beat me in the face easily with with well, like a thousand percent. Yeah, both of us. But he looks like a goofy motherfucker when he's yeah. on his feet trying to throw strikes. Yeah, like like you said, compared to everyone else. It yeah, would, but he was landing. Some some good uppercuts. Yeah, he, was, he really was. He he cracked Maya a bunch of times, and yeah, he did. I think he he won at least the f- one one of the first two rounds. Yeah. Um, yeah. but uh, that's the problem with when you have a, a like a heavy wrestling game like Askren, and you give a submission demon like Maya, he can't just shoot for takedowns like he would against a guy who is of a lower caliber. Yeah. So. It was a real chess match, and there was some really good. I'm glad that we got to see some scrambles because we got to see Ben get out of some bad situations. We got to see him take Maya down and and, and not be submitted. Um, but then then he got caught. He got caught. I felt that he was waiting till the ends of the first two rounds to take him down in case shit went bad. He would kind of feel out how good Maya was on the ground, take him down, and then it's like, okay, if I do get caught in something, I only have to survive for a minute. Which makes a lot of sense when you think about it, but it, it we did have this discussion during the fight, and it was like you said it, it made a lot of sense, and then immediately afterwards he changed his mind. Well, the first two rounds, I think what happened was he took him down, he got out of the danger, and he, you don't know if he got confident from that. Yeah. But then the third round, he took him down halfway through the round, and that's where the trouble started. And that's that's kind of where he got it. I'd like to see what the time was when the takedown to he actually got submitted. But he put him to sleep. It looked like so. Oh yeah, he did. Yeah. The the thing that sucks about this is that everyone uh, online is just talking mad shit about Ben Askren. And I don't know if you know the backstory about Ben Askren. I do not. Okay, so Ben Askren was one of like those highest prospect guys that never fought in the UFC. Yeah. For, up until last year, and. He would go back and forth as being uh, with Dana White. Like, they didn't get along, didn't want to sign him. You know, 
Dan White actually had a really good one. He said uh, Ambien takes Ben Askren to go to sleep at night because he said he's, he's a boring fighter because he just wrestle pe- wrestles people. Yeah. But, like, in the Robbie Lawler fight when he got, like, he basically got knocked out twice before he won. Well, but that, that was more damage than we saw him take his entire career. Like, he just didn't get take damage. So, but the thing that sucks is that he only came over to the UFC after he'd already retired. Like, he how retired old? from the sport. How old is he? I think he's a 30, mid-30s. Okay, okay. Um, But, again, wrestling his whole life at an extremely high level. So Yeah, he's an Olympic wrestler. Yeah, if you if you look at the relative age of an athlete like that, it's not like just some guy walking around who's 30 whose body is totally fine. He's yeah, probably yeah. got some dings. Yeah. So, it kind of sucks because I think he's a little bit past his prime years. So, it's like we're not getting – I don't think we're getting the – the best of the best, both physically and mentally, for the hunger of wanting to prove himself. Because he won titles in other organizations, but he talks a lot of shit too. So a lot of these guys just want him to lose. And you know, everyone jumping on the bandwagon with Masvidal, like they were just eating it up, want you know, making fun of him for getting knocked out in five seconds and all this shit. So I just think he's one of those fighters that is never going to get the credit from the from the casual fans that he deserves because of his performances in the UFC. It's like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, he, he's had stellar performances everywhere else, but they're not the highlight of his career because, because it UFC wasn't in the UFC and the we never, we'll never but, know yeah. what it, what it would have been. And it's almost, he kind of came to the dance a little too late in that aspect. And it sucks. If he had showed up 10 years ago, well, who knows what, would he might, have might've been the same result, yeah. but we, we won't know. Yeah. Uh, and, and it kind of sucks because he's again, for not being in the UFC and being as popular as he is, he's doing something right. Yeah. So, yeah, congrats to Maya. I mean, he's got a – I think he just signed a new contract. He's got a couple more fights with the UFC. But, yeah, um, it was a good fight. I kind of wanted to see Askren win. Yeah. Especially after that hard loss to uh, to Masvidal with, with five seconds. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't think he's going to retire. I, I hope not. But – I mean, it is what it is either way. Hopefully he doesn't because, like you said, it was a good performance. And hopefully he does take a little bit away from this. Um, I was nervous yeah. about the setup from the beginning because I did say on Tuesday or Wednesday's podcast, whatever you want to consider it, that, yeah, Askren has a whole lot of wrestling behind him. But with those guys, once they take them take down their opponents, they have nowhere to go. Like, yeah. And I'm sure he has some sort of submission game, but it's not the same thing when you're facing a guy like Maya. Who, like, yeah, that's it's just what they do. Two guys that are experts in their field, their yeah. chosen field. And the, but the problem is with Askren trying to get a fight now is that when he came over here, he was oh, he was billed as like this guy that was going to come over and I'm going to take over the UFC and I'm going to just walk through everybody and win no matter what. And he gets to Robbie Lawler after almost getting destroyed. And then, you know, basically goes on a thing like, who else you got? This was easy. It wasn't, but he, you know, that's his whole shtick. Then he gets knocked out in five seconds. And everyone's like, see, we told you, he's a fucking punk. But then he's got the thing, hey, it's five seconds. Anyone can get caught. Then you have an outing like this. Who do you, what do you do to build a fight now? I don't know. Your the, tra- the hype train has been derailed. Significantly. Pretty significantly um, for that whole I've been one of the best fighters in the world. It doesn't, it's not looking good for that hype train anymore. So I don't know who he's going to fight, but he's got to put on some kind of an impressive performance. That was going to be my question. I don't know who they would throw him up against now. I don't know. Yeah, right? I don't know. But I hope he comes back. I'd like to see him string a couple of victories together and, and maybe fight for a title once. But, uh, you know, he might just be done with the game mentally. I don't know. I don't know. Well, we will have to wait and see. Yes, we will. Uh, speaking of waiting and seeing. Next Tuesday, live, we're going to be having... This Tuesday. This Tuesday, which is also the next one. We're going to be having... <laughs> this coming Tuesday. This coming Tuesday. We're going to be live with a couple of What Do You Gots? And yes. also a Fight Fan Weekly, where we're going to be giving out some news and also going over the upcoming UFC 244, the BMF belt. Oh, shit. The BMF. We can't say it. Bad motherfucker. And we swear plenty. Baddest motherfucker. Baddest. Actually. The baddest non-doping motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. So I think that about wraps. So I think it does about wrap it up. All right. Go to, yeah. Peace out, everybody. You're listening to Bro Down Podcast all fucking day. Oh.